Alright everyone, I'm Misty Fizz, and I'm going to clear up some over-exaggerated and absolutely untrue claims regarding Super Mario Bros. 2 that figures such as the irate gamer and angry video game nerd used to label the game a complete rip-off and failure. Before I begin, it's important to point out that this is not a review of Super Mario Bros. 2, nor is it a comparison to its phenomenal predecessor. This isn't a summary of its gameplay mechanics or the series' story, and I do not intend on criticizing it with my own opinion. As an added disclaimer, I'd like to mention that I am in no way associated with the parties mentioned above. Quite frankly, I'm just tired of all the monstrous misconceptions regarding the game. And with that, let's just jump right into it. All opinion decides, Super Mario Bros. 2 is arguably the most unique Mario game in regards to gameplay mechanics. Though people like the irate gamer might have you convinced that its unique gameplay is actually stolen from a game called Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic, the ambitions behind its creation are vastly misunderstood. After the success of the original Super Mario Bros, Shigeru Miyamoto was quick to work on a sequel. His answer to this was what Americans would know as Super Mario Bros The Lost Levels, which was released with Super Mario All-Stars in the USA. As quoted from an IGN article on the history of Super Mario, visually, the game looked exactly the same as its predecessor, but it was harder. Much harder. The smooth level designs which made the first Mario game so replayable were replaced by harsh obstacle courses, which often required split-second jumps and a lot of luck. Miyamoto added items that would actually put the player at a disadvantage, poison mushrooms, movement hindering rain, and backward traveling warp points being just a few of them. Here's where all the misconceptions come in. Nintendo, the very company that employed Miyamoto, had decided that the lost levels exceeded North American skill level. They saw its release in America as a risk to the franchise, and seeing as though the plumber had brought the company out of the ashes in the first place, it was a risk they were not willing to take. Nintendo cancelled its release overseas, and in order to find a more playable alternative, looked toward another one of Miyamoto's dream projects, Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic. Yep, that's right. Nintendo wasn't some black-hearted corporate money launderer that steals ideas. It took the game originally designed by their own Shigeru Miyamoto, a game which he had spent more time on than he did the American version of Super Mario Bros. 2, put him in charge of it, and began the process of converting it into a more playable American alternative to Super Mario Bros. 2. Super Mario Bros. 2 is also accused of stealing music from Doki Doki Panic, which is yet another harsh misconception. The music used in both games was created by Nintendo's own Koji Kondo, the musical genius that worked with Miyamoto on the original Mario and several other projects including the popular Zelda franchise. The original characters of Doki Doki Panic, Brother, Mama, Sister, and Papa, were all replaced with sprites of Mario, Princess Peach, Toad, and Luigi, respectively. Despite its criticism, Super Mario Bros. 2 was the very first game to give Luigi his own sprite, and the first game to expand on its flimsy characteristics, which would define him in future Nintendo games. Yet another myth surrounding Super Mario Bros. 2 is the game's massive lack of popularity among Mario fans. This can be immediately discredited by a sales number presented in Stephen L. Kent's book, The Ultimate History of Video Games, which states that the game was a major hit and that Nintendo sold 6.76 million copies of the game worldwide. One might compare this sales statistic with the number of units the original Super Mario Bros. sold. However, one must not forget that the original Super Mario Bros. was packaged with the NES, and can be accredited more to NES sales than it can to Super Mario Bros. sales. One must also remember that a game like Super Mario Bros. 3 only sold about 9.4 million, and was also considered to be the most popular game of the entire Mario franchise. The irate gamer also likes to point out that enemies like Birdo, who was originally introduced in Super Mario Bros. 2, was a terrible addition simply because it was not recognizable in the game's predecessor. It is a pretty uncomfortable feeling to dive into a sequel that differs so much from its predecessor, but at the same time, it's important to praise games which are powered by innovation and uniqueness. Birdo, for example, will later make appearances in various Mario spin-offs like Mario Kart and Mario Tennis, and cannot be dismissed as a worthless addition to the Nintendo character roster. And here's where my opinion comes in. The irate gamer accuses the game of being an impossibly hard, frustrating journey through an unbelievably ill-designed world. I'm no one to define what a true gamer is, but I do know that someone who is accustomed to side-scrolling games will easily get through the game after familiarizing themselves with the simple controls. We know it's not like the first, and just because he has a difficult time getting through it, and every other game in existence, by no means justifies classifying the game as so-called butt-fucking-hard. To sum it all up, 
The American version of Super Mario Bros. 2 is a recreation of Miyamoto's original game Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic, and is by no means a stolen idea. Because Japanese gamers found the lost levels, the original Super Mario Bros. 2, so difficult and Japanese gamers were considered and revered as the more advanced gamers during the time, Nintendo saw the need to find an alternative that would capture a western audience and not kill the momentum built up from its first Mario Bros. game. For those interested in this concept, which is not unique to Super Mario Bros. 2, they should read into a business communication concept called game localization, which will help clear up any and all questions they have about game copies. In the meantime, thanks for listening everyone, and I really hope this clears up the air surrounding Super Mario Bros. 2.